Welcome everybody. My name is Stephen Niu. Uh, welcome to the first edition of New Asia Challenge. I'm very happy to welcome everybody uh, today for my guest. His name is Ryo Umezawa. Um, I actually met him through the startup dating portal in Japan. And perhaps, uh, Ryo san, would you like to tell us briefly about yourself and your various business initiatives? Hi, uh, my name is Ryo Umezawa. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I've spent uh, 10 years uh, in the Philippines when I was uh, from elementary school to high school, came back to Japan, been involved in the startup field um, since my university days as an interning and a startup, uh, been involved in uh, more than maybe comp about a total of 10 companies starting up as well as uh, doing some angel investment, sitting as advisor for several of the companies and as well as uh, starting of my company. So I guess I'm an all-arounder, uh, wanna be everything. <laughs> <laughs> could, could you uh, share with us some of your latest activities in Japan and Asia, especially like uh, you mentioned that uh, you actually have a business, new business initiative in Vietnam. Can mm -hmm. talk more about that? Sure. So this is one of the company I sit as an advisor for. Um, it's a 100% subsidiary of a public company in Japan. Uh, basically, the mission is to bring uh, the current business assets uh, to overseas, the parent company's business assets to overseas, as well as create new businesses in uh, five regions. You mentioned Vietnam. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, we looked at, uh, we're looking at Philippines, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, and Malaysia. And so the, start, the business we started in Vietnam is about uh, online market research. So we will get uh, panels of users in Vietnam. Um, we will get an online survey of, for example, uh, this time the, the, the market research was about uh, the love or relationships. So how much you would spend on a date or if cheating on your wife or oh. girlfriend or boyfriend <laughs> is accepted, uh, what nationality would they favor to date with and etc. So these are the information that we gathered in order for uh, Japanese companies or foreign companies uh, trying to enter the market, uh, the Vietnam market, by finding out the data. So <clears throat> entertainment, like for example, uh, so what we're good at is like a social games or a casual game. Mm. Uh, in order to find out the best uh, users for apps or games mm. would be from entering from the entertainment side, mm. from the relationship side. So we would know uh, what contents would fit them the most. Mm -hmm. So these this are the, some of the um, services we're starting up right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, you actually have a lot of uh, business ventures uh, in Asia and also in Japan. Like, could you share with us your thoughts about uh, going to venture into Asia and then also perhaps like companies going coming here into Japan? Could you share your thoughts and views about that? Sure. So Japanese companies going abroad, I think it's a very difficult uh, process mm. and uh, very hard to execute. But I think it's worthwhile where you see that Asia's market is growing uh, outside of Japan as well. Mm. Um, however, I think there's many barriers to entry. Mm. Uh, for example, that's from the political side, economical side, and uh, the co corruptions there as well. So mm. politically, you know, uh, some areas, I won't say all, are sometimes not stable uh, due to um, politicians trying to take over mm -hmm. the government and etc. So they could change the law anytime. And um, for the <coughs> financial side, I, uh, in terms of uh, social gaming or mobile online platform, mm -hmm. the ARPU, average revenue per user, is a lot higher uh, in Japan than mm -hmm. when compared to Asian countries. And the third thing I mentioned was about corruption. So it's about how you deal with people. Uh, either you need to bribe someone or you know you want to do the legitimate way. For us, uh, the company I sit as advisor for, we're a subsidiary of public company in Japan. So it's very difficult in order to go into the corruption way. So we have to do it always the legitimate way, which we face many barriers. And addition, I think the, the time span that will take for us uh, to go overseas, is, uh, it takes a lot more than what we would be doing in Japan because first we're not accustomed to the, their culture and the business activities so we have to learn and get used to it and then you know it, it, it 
can't just start from day one. Mm. You need uh, localization, not only for the language, but adjusting to the culture and etc. So I think for the Japanese companies, in order to go abroad and Asian market, we need to commit in the long span, be able to invest upfront and understand the differences in order to uh, win in the market. Mm. I think this is for the uh, outbound mm. question. And as regarding to the inbound, uh, this could be for the US or uh, Asian entrepreneurs or companies that want to come in. Uh, Japan is sometimes explained as Garapagos. Uh, have you heard of the word? Yeah, Garapagos, course, yeah. So, you know, we're kind of like uh, isolated in a way. Mm -hmm. And of course, every country in the world has uh, its own unique styles and way of doing business and culture. Mm. However, Japan has been formed from, of course, as an island and you know, it's been like that for a <laughs> really long time. Yes. And so it's it kind of custom to work within the culture mm. and people that you know of yeah. and who you can trust. And uh, businesses usually start from trust and I always emphasize that drinking, communication, which is in Japanese communication, mm -hmm. is kind of like a starting point to get to know each other rather than just meeting the meeting, mm -hmm. meeting room. Uh, where in foreign countries, of course this really depends on which country, but a lot of cases, because it's very hard to travel, like in the US, you just have a conference call, you get an introduction, you meet up, and you know, if you uh, or what do you call this, your assets or interest matches, you start doing business immediately, where in Japan, it's more of, you know, not contract basis, it's more of the trust, and you go from there. So I believe uh, in terms of inbound, I think there's a lot of effort uh, you have to do in terms of building the relationships, mm -hmm. and as well as uh, business ethics could be different. It's not really only, okay, here's a contract, this is the price, do you want it or not? You know, it's more on the sentimental side as well as you know how uh, close you are with the counterpart because at the end of the day deals could go, go well but a lot of cases um, it fails or you encounter problems and it's about you know uh, how to improve uh, in Japanese uh, there's a word called Kaizen mm. it's to understand and then fix it and make sure it won't happen again and Japanese put a lot of effort into Kaizen. So in understanding the process, I think uh, it's one of the most important key in entering the market, rather than what capital you have, or of course business, uh, what business you have is also important, but this uh, values that people have here, mm -hmm. understanding that is, I think, important. Uh, so what advice do you have for Japanese companies that are thinking about uh, moving into Asia mm -hmm. or for companies that are interested to come to Japan, like what is your advice to them? For Japanese companies, I um, kind of briefly mentioned a while ago, but I think they need to be committed in a long term. Mm. You can't expect to have the same revenue as what your uh, what the company is making in Japan because there's a difference of economy. I mentioned about the average revenue per user. Japan is way ahead when you talk about mobile. Uh, contents mm. or on the gaming side, you could spend about uh, for uh, average revenue per user like a three to four dollars for games. Average revenue per paying user that could be up to thirty to forty dollar mm. per person. When you compare with the U.S., it's like uh, ten times bigger, or sometimes even more, just mm. by even comparing to the U.S. So it's a lot less for Asia. Of course, um, you know Korea. Uh, could be high ARPU and China could be uh, pretty much high but the rest of like for, for example when you look at Southeast Asia where uh, the company I'm advising for is targeting uh, we're looking at uh, lower ARPU so um, <clears throat> committing for a long term as well as customizing the business model and trying to create an, another revenue source of income in order to be sustainable um, is I think important key. So <clears throat> in short, uh, long-term commitment and big enough wallet in order to invest <laughs> hoping for a great future because um, sooner or later uh, the economy will be shifting to all of Asia rather than the developed country mm -hmm. right now. Uh, how about advice for companies that um uh, thinking like uh, how about for entrepreneurs and companies like how do you see yourself playing the role in helping them to actually cope with these challenges and issues? 
Uh, uh, myself? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think uh, my experience living in the Philippines mm. um, allowed me to kind of interact with, in, when I was a student, interact with uh, students from 60 countries. Mm. Um, and that's, I think it was a great experience for me to understand different cultures. And I used to play sports in a team mm. and was a captain. So I have to gather all different nationality. I mean, it's different from business, but you know, when you go out for dinner, one guy can't eat pork, one another guy is vegetarian, <laughs> another guy has some religion, um, and etc. So you know, to gather all these differences, I learned already in the early days um, how to kind of put together um, a group of uh, different countries and different nationality, different mindset. So I think uh, having a variety of um, <clears throat> uh, or this experience helps me in order to approach um, foreign market. So uh, I, I guess you know how I could support is you know maybe give them the uh, kind of warning on how much you have to commit <laughs> in the beginning. Um, you know, and also it, it's it takes a long time in order mm -hmm. to adjust and understand. So I would say you know maybe I could you know take them uh, to or kind of like a business tour to learn the culture and then, you know, be able to really, you know, this, I think it will help them to decide mm -hmm. if they should really commit into the area or not. So mm -hmm. I think that could be the fir first approach. And second would be, you know, having a unique business model adjusting to this market would be, I think, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm happy to brainstorm from my experiences of uh, reaching all these uh, regions. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm looking at your uh, LinkedIn profile and mm -hmm. I can see that you really have a really long and illustrious history of being mm -hmm. like an investor, advisor, mm -hmm. a mentor. Like how do you juggle between your different roles and then with your various business ventures? I, I kind of tell my motto as uh, play hard, work less, but <laughs> I end up being uh, uh, interested into many things. How I balance is, you know, not all the companies need me, need me every single day. Of course, at certain time or certain project wise, I have to be committed or when the startup I invest is pivoting their business, basically changing their business model, I will, you know, sometimes focus on my time, all, all my efforts there. But usually, I'm, I'm more on the biz, biz dev guy, marketing um, and starting up. So, Luckily for now, it doesn't collapse each other on like, you know, it doesn't overlap. Mm -hmm. So I am able to kind of allocate my time on different days mm -hmm. to different things. And, and I think it's also another thing is a prioritization. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need to uh, analyze what is needed now and what I want to be doing. And of course, I also have stepped down from some of the companies as uh, directors because you know timing or you know team wise it grown up so it's also for me uh, to find the right time when to step down and when to be associated mm -hmm. is the key of juggling everything at once mm -hmm. so uh, do you have any final word like advice or opinions that you want to share with our viewers or about Japanese companies want to go out or people want coming to come into Japan to start a new business venture I think for the outbound one, outbound wise, um, yeah, so long term commitment, understand the market, and be able to prepare all the uh, investment um, analysis ahead of time rather than, you know, try and then leave because that's not going to be a good image for, you know, the other following Japanese entrepreneurs or companies uh, want to get into the market. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of preparation, analysis, and at the end of the day, you know, of course, you can do all the analysis, but it doesn't go, it doesn't always execute the way you always thought. So, you know, uh, just jump in and trying out. So having that, uh, uh, what it calls passion mm. and uh, execution is important. Mm. Um, and uh, guts in order to be able to take anything that may happen uh, in this country when you go outbound. And in terms of inbound, I suggest, you know, learning the culture, uh, make more visit here and then understand the business, how it works. And then I think finding a guy um, that is a hub to all the communities, it could be a tech space or it could be 
uh, manufacturing or it could be any industry, in every country, I believe there is always a hub, mm. hub guy that is bilingual, have done uh, a lot of business, uh, have a lot of business experiences, that is you know willing to help you out. So um, finding the hub, the guy, go-to guy, uh, in Japan for uh, the businesses, whichever business is, I think the best or the most important key in order to come in and penetrate and uh, starting to develop your business here. Mm. So, thank you very much for your time today and I'm sure the audience will really love like really love your views about the new Asia challenge that companies are facing right now. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your time and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next edition of New Asia Challenge. Thank you.